Hi, I'm Melody. Welcome to Myanmar Today Review, and this is where we revisit the top stories for this week from Myanmar Today. Here are the reports from our reporters from this week. Aka Jo will be giving us a look into how supporters gathered for state councillor's defence in ICJ. Wilson got the latest report on the reinforcing forest department for maintenance. Dora Suizin will give us the details on women in business and leadership development. David Tanner has the full story on cashless system and the future of payments. Dora Suizin once again has the full story on contribution of British education to Myanmar students. Before we get to the reports, let's take a look at the featured local news from this week. The first ever medical skill simulation and research center opens in Yangon on Monday. The center was opened by the state councillor Do Al San Suu Kyi, union ministers, and concerned officials. According to the officials, the project for the center started since December 2017 and completed in September of this year. Rector of the University of Medicine said the eight-story building will consist of. Necessary training facilities, apply IT and digital technology in medical education, and many more to develop Myanmar's medical industry. He also stressed on the future work plans for the continual development of the center. The officials said the similar center of its kind is planning to open in Mandalay in the future. Vice President U Myint Sui, Chairman of Central Committee for Organizing 2020-72nd Independence Day celebrations, delivered an address to the third coordination meeting of the committee held at the Union Government Office Meeting Hall in Nebido on Wednesday. At the meeting, the vice president said that in order to hold the Independence Day nationwide with the five national objectives, the Central Committee for Organizing 2020-72nd Independence Day celebration was formed, and ten subcommittees were also formed to implement the guidelines of the Central Committee systematically. Independence Day celebrations are to be held in the regions and states in line with the national objectives. In a celebration which will be held in Union Territory Nebido, there will be morning and evening sessions. And that's all with the local news. This is Myanmar Today Review, broadcasting from Myanmar International Radio on FM. Make sure you catch us on ninety six point one FM in Yangon, ninety six point five in Mandalay, and ninety six point seven in Nebido. You can also download MI Radio app on both iOS and Android devices for your own convenience. And I believe it's time now for our first report. Hundreds of people flocked to Mahabandula Park in Yangon on Sunday to show their support for State Councillor Do Aung San Suu Kyi, who is preparing to defend the country against human rights violation allegation at the International Court. Aka Jo has more. <laughs> Hundreds of people flocked to Mahabandula Park in Yangon on Sunday to show their support for State Councillor Dong San Suu Kyi, who is preparing to defend the country against human rights violation allegations at the International Court. About 800 supporters and members of the National League for Democracy Party rallied at the Yangon City Hall. The supporters will listen to music, join in singing the song, and waving national flag. The support campaigns have been held in the country to show strong stand with the leader. Moreover, recently, Myanmar people living in London showed support to the leader's effort to tackle the case at the ICJ. We organized this event to show our serious and firm support to our leader, Do Aung San Suu Kyi, who is ongoing to International Court of Justice against the human rights violation accusations. Today, we will show support by chanting with the slogan, We stand with Do Aung San Suu Kyi, and we have strong performance. There will be another event on 10th of December as well. 
Gambia lodged 46-page human rights violation allegation on the Rakhine issue against Myanmar. Myanmar is to defend the case at the International Court of Justice. While people are showing support for the leader's firm stand for the case at ICJ, they are also concerned with the complexity of the case. This case is very profound and vast. It's very fragile. This harms the dignity and benefits of our country. We strongly disapprove the allocation on that the state council of the Aung San Suu Kyi is going to stand up and defend the country against it. We profoundly support and we are very satisfied and appreciate it. Our leader is going to address this case at ICJ on 10th of December. In doing so, we firmly support her lead on this matter. This is one of the responsibilities of each and every citizen in this country. This is the responsibility of people who reside in the Union. As Lutra representative, this is the cause of our country and so we will be standing with our leader. In supporting our leader, I wish there are support campaigns like this in other parts of the country. I would like to urge not only people here but also other ethnic people to join hands in supporting our leader. If we are united, then we will possess a good future. The International Court of Justice ICJ, sometimes called the World Court, is the principal judicial organ of the United Nations UN. The ICJ's primary functions are to settle international legal disputes submitted by states and give advisory opinions on legal issues referred to it by the UN. Through its opinions and rulings, it serves as a source of international law. The ICJ is the successor of the Permanent Court of International Justice, which was established by the League of Nations in 1920 and began its first session in 1922. After the Second World War, both the League and the PCIJ were succeeded by the United Nations and ICJ, respectively. The statute of the ICJ draws heavily from that of its predecessor, and the latter's decisions remain valid. All members of the UN are party to the ICJ statute. This is Agajo reporting for Myanmar International Radio. That's the report on how supporters gathered for state councillors' defense in ICJ. Myanmar is a country with one of the most densely thick tropical rainforests and possesses one of the largest in Asia. However, due to several reasons, the amount of forest has been declining. Therefore, the government is now planning to preserve and improve the issue of deforestation and Amyo Daloto discussed this issue on the 29th of November at its regular meeting. Willison will tell us the full report. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of United Nations, there are about 31.77 million hectares of forest in Myanmar. An average of 372,000 hectares or 0.95% of forest has been lost annually between 1990 to 2010. The organization states that within the period of 20 years, more than 7 million hectares of the forest have been cleared in Myanmar. Myanmar is one of the top 10 countries in the world where the highest deforestations are happening and its rank is 7. Therefore, planting trees and maintaining the green forest is very much essential in Myanmar, lest the consequences of climate change be far harsh to bear as Myanmar is one of the most natural disaster affected nations in the world. Therefore, Amuda Lodal representatives at its second time 14 regular session on 29 of November discussed on proper training for the staff of forest departments with the help of World Bank, ADB, and World Wildlife Fund in its capacity, functions, ethics, and using the facilities and equipment. The proposal to urge the government in reinforcing the forest department with proper training and equipment for the maintenance of the forest was first proposed by Usa Kinzao Lin, Lodal representative of Ayawari Region Constituency No. 2. Discussing at Lodal meeting, Major Tel Lin, Tamro representatives discuss. The 
Some of the main reasons for deforestation is our nation is slash and burn farming, increasing area of agriculture, the usage of charcoal for fuels, excessive production of timber, illegal logging, encroaching forestry area, road construction and expanding area of village and city, the construction of dams for agricultural purpose, and the burning of forest. However, we fail to stop deforestation in Myanmar. There is no long-term project for the government for maintenance, no proper procedures in timber production. Due to limited human resources, the forest department staff are not able to monitor the forest properly. The production of the timber more than the number of trees annually also affects deforestation severely, which results in a decline of the number of some value trees and the value of the forest. Therefore, it is very important to carry out the work more carefully than ever where we preserve the forest, meeting the need of the public and the rule of law is put into action. Dr. North Christo, further representative of Guyan State Constituency 7 also discussed Forest is where all the living beings are depending upon. It also contributes a lot to the national economic interests of a nation, at the same time keep the balance of nature. Few decades ago, our nation possessed one of the largest tropical rainforests among other ASEAN countries, with 70% of forests covering us, but now it has come down to just 43%. Every year, we lose 1.2% of the forest. The related ministry has its own project and plan to reduce the amount of deforestation, but till today, we have not seen any improvement but continuous decline of forestation. Therefore, we need to take the proposal of Usa Kinsolin seriously and act properly. In response to the discussion, Dr. Ye Mian Sui, the Beauty Minister for the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environmental Conservation, said that in order to preserve and maintain the forest, efforts to tackle the impacts of climate change and also keep the international commitments related to forestry, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environmental Conservation has projected a 10 year plan in the fiscal years of 2017 and 2018. The government is also collaborating with international organizations, both government and non-governmental organizations, in tackling deforestation and keeping the forest green. From 2016 to 2019, a total of 31 projects have been carried out successfully, which includes development of human resources. Till October of 2019, total of 33 projects were in the midst of work, and it also includes both human resources development and research program. The government is also working on investment program for the development of forest department and forestry with the collaboration of World Bank. In the end of discussion, Shadow approved the proposal of Uza Kinzalin. This is Wulin Sun reporting for MI Radio. That's the report on reinforcing Forest Department for maintenance. Moving on to our third report. To empower women to get involved in business fields and achieve the leadership positions, the conference called Women in Business and Leadership Development was organized by Ot Cham Myanmar on 30th of November at Rosewood Hotel in Yango. The participants share the challenges women are facing in workplace and discuss how to encourage the young woman to be in the workforce. Ostrom, an Australian NGO, hosted the fourth Women in Business and Leadership Development Conference, which brought together the participants from different setters of businesses, entrepreneurs, and leadership positions, sharing the insights and advices for women in empowerment and gender equality. The conference, with a focus of breaking through the glass ceiling, kicked off at Rosewood Hall, Te Yangon, on 30 November. The objective of today's event is absolutely to create an opportunity for female Myanmar leaders and business leaders to come together. We really want to have an opportunity for Myanmar women who are going to be future leaders of this country to participate, to grow, to listen to other leaders, 
to have um, a session where we can all encourage each other to develop an equal opportunity and women empowerment in our economy and our business. I think that Myanmar is a country that has opened up recently and many opportunities have come um, and have opened up. But at the same time, there's a lot of change that needs to happen. And so certainly in terms of talking about a glass ceiling, as some of the panellists mentioned, it can be different for different people in different situations. There's a lot to be done in education. There's a lot to be done, I guess, in um, the country opening up and uh, the adjustment to new cultures, adjustment to international practices. Um, I don't think of these so much as a barrier or a ceiling, but I see it as a challenge. And I see it as something which is why why a forum like this is so important that we get everyone together, the opportunity for young Myanmar people, but at the same time using the skills, the knowledge of those who are older, those from abroad, those with education and those with experience. And I hope together that's how we can overcome these barriers. One of the panelists, Dolly Liang, Program Director of Plan International Myanmar, which is implementing the community-based projects in some states and regions in Myanmar, explained about the participation of young women in these projects. And I think you know, the, the change that you see in girls is transformational. The, for the first time, they're learning how to be confident, how to take on this leadership role, and they're part of the school management committee for the first time together with boys. And I think they're starting to really earn respect from their teachers in the communities. And I think that really helped change public perception in terms of what girls can do and, and the change that they can bring about. And so we, we implement similar um, initiatives in all of the different sectors that plan, and they include education, employment, leadership um, and, and health and nutrition and I think you know there there are a few gaps I think one is is building that leadership skills early on building that confidence because we have a lot of harmful culture and social norms in this country and they're really affecting our girls they are they're growing up without that confidence so that's one and then second women professionals who are already working they are torn with all of the pressures from the society. They, they're worried about being blamed as not being a good mother, a good wife, a good employee. And that, that psychological impact is huge. Yes? And so then that's impacting their ability to move up to senior positions. And then the third, women who are already in senior positions are worried about the, the, some of the attacks and some of the challenges that they face. Honestly, I think women's positional and personal powers are tested every day. Over 50% of women are not in the workforce, so it is important to encourage them to get involved in business fields as well as to achieve the leadership roles. Even before, way before women can enter into the workforce, there are a lot of socio cultural barriers that women have to overcome, some in the name of culture tradition and religion. So women have to break through those um, barriers to get onto the workforce and then to try hard. So those are the very first step. But once you get into the workforce, once you get to the play, uh, play field, then uh, women are already, those women are already capable and proven of the success and they could do it. So we have to create an environment in an organization where women belongs due to the skill set and intelligence. So we have to, to create a culture that the, both women and women, uh, men and women, anyone is free to share the challenges and um, feel they feel f um, safe and comfortable to share, to share the challenges and to ask for the support to overcoming them. That's all for now. This is Laura Susan from MI Radio. That's the report on women in business leadership's development. On Monday at Myanmar Plaza, Union Pay Myanmar announced the launch of a 13-week Go for Gold campaign that rewards lucky cardholders who spend a minimum of 30,000 jets in a single receipt with their locally issued union pay cards. 
We will find out more about the event and how cashless system will impact the future of our payments and financial management in the report of our reporter, David Tanner. The campaign will reward one lucky card holder each week with a gold coin worth about 10 lakh. All participants will automatically enter the grand draw for a chance to win a gold coin worth 50 lakhs. Mr. Vincent Lin, the Deputy General Manager of Union Pay International Southeast Asia said. Uh, every week we're giving away a small price, but at the end of uh, our campaign in March 2020, we'll give away a big prize that is a 57 gram of pure gold coin uh, to the grand prize winner. And this is uh, one of our biggest spend promotion campaign that we have ever started uh, in Myanmar and uh, we are very pleased to uh, to be uh, delivering this uh, in uh, Myanmar starting from today. How and why did Union Pay initiated in Myanmar and how can it impact Myanmar's people activities or financial usage and management? The reason why we would like to bring this uh, program to Myanmar is because uh, very simple the fact that uh, we would like to encourage uh, more people in Myanmar to go cashless because uh, cashless is a more efficient way of uh, transacting in merchants, especially when you go abroad. In this instance, uh, for example, if you have uh, two countries to visit, for example, my home country, Singapore or Thailand, you have to go and change uh, the currency, which is uh, very uh, troublesome. And uh, when you come back, you might have excess currency and you have to change back. Uh, there is a, a bit of uh, inefficiency here. Traveling abroad, taking a card is your best option. Because in certain instances, uh, there will be chances of savings as well. More than 1,000 places where you can find savings across the whole region. And that is uh, one of the best ways to actually make savings as you travel. Second of all, I think the most important thing is that we want to encourage uh, people from Myanmar to go more cashless. Uh, using a card payment is certainly more convenient and more safe and more secure. For example, if you are buying a big item, you'll be carrying uh, lots of cash. That is very inconvenient and uh, not to mention it's uh, not quite safe as well. So electronic payment is the way to go and the reason for this, for us doing this is to encourage as many people to use electronic payments in Myanmar as possible. So a cashless society describes an economic state whereby financial transactions are not conducted with money in the form of physical banknotes or coins or cash, but rather through the transfer of digital information, usually an electronic representation of money between the transaction parties. With that said, will the cashless be the future for Myanmar and the Southeast Asia regions? Mr. Vincent Lin answered in his perspective. Cashless will certainly be the future uh, of life, future way of life uh, for people, of course in Myanmar as well, in Southeast Asia as well. Uh, there are a lot of innovation today uh, that de depends on cashless payment. Uh, I think uh, ride hailing, food delivery is one of the good examples where uh, the combination of the smartphone, the data and payments is necessary for uh, this tra commerce to actually happen. Uh, electronic transactions, uh, because of uh, it being more secure, uh, the customers will trust the merchants more and the merchants can trust the customer more. There is a better trust between both sides of the transaction. As a result of that, transactions become frictionless. And when transactions become frictionless, more commerce will happen. When more commerce will happen, it will just only be good for the economy in general, for any country. I have also interviewed May Grace for her perspective in the usage of cashless transaction and her experience in the usage of this technology of cashless financial management? Uh, yes, I do. I use uh, cashless, uh, yeah, I use cards every day. I find that it's very convenient. And this is a process that's very new to Myanmar. Um, I remember as a child, if we were to like go out and buy something, we'd have to bring lots of you know, cash notes with us and it's very bulky. Uh, now we don't even need a big bag or anything. We'll have a little wallet, have our card and just we can buy anything we want. It's very convenient. Um, I believe that this kind of system is very convenient and it is very safe. Uh, also, it's a great way to save money and um, we can really trust the banks and uh, there's so many pros that come along with that. And I urge you to do your research and yeah, like it is the future. Reporter David Tanner reporting from Myanmar International Radio. That's the report on cashless system and the future of payments.
The University of Sunderland, the British public university with high rank of student enrollment, is to provide its courses to Myanmar students in collaboration with the British University in Yangon. The launching ceremony of the new program was held on Sunday at Sule Shangri-La Hotel in Yangon. A British public university, the University of Sunderland, has collaborated with the British University College in Myanmar for a new program which will provide the same teaching method and curriculum of the University of Sunderland in UK and will certify with the accredited British education. The launching ceremony of the new program by the University of Sunderland in Myanmar was held on 1st December at Sule Shangri La Hotel in Yangon. The students can join the courses at British University College starting from January of next year. Country Director of British Council, Mr. Richard Sunderland, also attended the ceremony and shared his thoughts of one of the public universities of UK coming to Myanmar. So we're here today for the launch of uh, British University College and University of Sunderland. So the students here can get access to UK qualifications and awards, uh, bachelor's degrees, so helping young people connect with knowledge that can take them very far in their lives. Oh, Nyamaru, the British University College Master Roche, the Business and Management, International Tourism, Hospitality Management, the the students can join business management and international tourism and hospitality management, which will be touched with the same curriculum of the University of Sunderland. You can get access to the same quality education like staring abroad in UK at a lower cost in here. The teachers are both the locals and the foreigners. For the lookers, they are officially approved by the University of Sunderland. For our curriculum, it is already reviewed and approved by the University of Sunderland as well. We have received guidelines from their academic team. To get entrance to our British University College, you need to apply like you do for the overseas studying. The University of Sunderland has a long tradition of delivering high quality programs which deliver um, significant graduate outcomes for success. 94% of our graduates go on to work or further study into a graduate employment and many, many of our graduates are become managers and leaders to support their economies into the future. The university has 24 partners all over the world and we have a campus in Hong Kong and well-established presence in many parts of Southeast Asia and Indonesia. So we feel that this is a good opportunity to use our experience to establish a presence in Myanmar and we're very excited about that opportunity. The University of Sunderland is officially accredited and is one of the universities in UK with high range of student enrollment. Students who study University of Sunderland programs can expect a high standard of content within their programs. They can expect good quality support no matter where they study. That's very, very important to the university that that support is in place from the day that they enrol with us to the day that they graduate. I think there are a number of benefits. So because they are internationally recognised, uh, employers locally will see that degree or that award as a good qu qualification for an applicant. And if the students want to again go and work abroad, also these will be internationally recognised uh, degrees. So global, global mobility. During the period of changing education system in Myanmar, the private sector plays an important role because the students can get access to international recognized education at much lower cost without leaving the country. I think this program will be very, very, very beneficial. I think the Myanmar education system is strengthening with every year. The government are working very hard on the reforms. And it's also important then on complementary, the private sector can support young people with other complementary education. So this program will help young people all over Myanmar uh, connect with these great opportunities from the University of Sunderland. 
The British Council in Myanmar is supporting and welcoming all UK education services coming into Myanmar. Uh, well, we support all UK uh, education uh, here in Myanmar. We promote uh, English language, we promote UK education. Uh, so I'm here today on behalf of the British Council just to encourage the university and British University College and say congratulations to them for this fantastic achievement. That's all for now. This is Dora Susan from MI Radio. That's the report on contribution of British education to Myanmar students. That's all with the news and reports on Myanmar Today Review. Tune in every Saturday on MITV at 8.30 p.m. for Myanmar Today Review. Until next time.